Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant find their problems may be getting worse. They've been struggling to control leaks of radioactive water. Now a monitoring well near a storage tank shows higher levels of radioactivity. More than 300 tons of highly radioactive water leaked last month from a storage tank. Workers suspect the water seeped into the soil. The plant's managers have assigned more monitors to check for radioactive materials in groundwater near the tank. They say the level of tritium at one of the wells rose on Tuesday to 64,000 becquerels per liter. That's more than twice the reading the previous day. The well is not located near where groundwater is flowing, and managers say most of the tainted soil around the tank has been removed, so they don't know how the water is getting contaminated. Workers had planned to pump up clean groundwater and reroute it into the ocean before it passes through reactor buildings. But their latest finding may change that plan. Now, the crisis has made headlines around the world. A French weekly newspaper has carried a caricature mocking the crisis and Japan's winning bid for the 2020 Olympic Games. A cartoon in the satirical Lucana on Chanet shows two thin sumo wrestlers fighting about. One wrestler has three arms, the other has three legs. Two people in protective gear referee outside the ring. A comment says sumo was picked as an Olympic sport thanks to Fukushima. The editors of the newspaper said the cartoon expresses surprise that Tokyo is hosting the Games even though the plant is not under control. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary said the government will lodge a protest against the paper. Such a cartoon will harm the victims of the earthquake and tsunami in northeastern Japan and give an inadequate impression about leaks of radioactive water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The editors say the caricature was not intended to hurt Japanese feelings. A U.S. nuclear expert has visited the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Lake Barrett spent four years directing cleanup operations after the nuclear disaster on Three Mile Island in 1979. He says the problems at Fukushima Daiichi are far more complex. Barrett was invited by Tokyo Electric Power Company to tour the stricken plant. He inspected the storage tank from which about 300 tons of contaminated water leaked last month. He was also shown a construction site for barriers to prevent radioactive water from seeping into the sea. Barrett says TEPCO's risk management of radioactive water was lax and that it should have designed high barriers around the storage tanks to contain any leaks. Barrett also met TEPCO's President Naomi Hirose. He says the problems at Fukushima Daiichi are further complicated because of the involvement of groundwater. The challenge is huge. Yes. It makes Three Mile Island look very simple. Uh, what you have is much more complex, uh, much more challenging. On Friday, Barrett is expected to meet TEPCO officials at the company's headquarters to get advice on how to manage the radioactive water. The poor handling of the plant poses a serious threat to local residents. About 40 percent of people who lived around the evacuation zone are choosing not to return, even though they've been told it's now safe. People still cannot live in the areas in red on this map. It's mainly within 20 kilometers of the plant. About 84,000 people were forced to leave those areas after the disaster. Advisories were lifted by March last year in the four municipalities shown in yellow. But NHK has found that only 60 percent of the 60,000 residents have returned so far. Even though government officials keep saying our area is safe, there are no reliable criteria. That's why it's so difficult for my neighbors to decide whether they should return to their homes. Many evacuees say they're worried about radiation that could harm their health, and they point to the lack of necessary facilities such as hospitals and stores. They also need places to work. Local leaders say they will urge the central government to swiftly tackle the issue. Officials with the industry ministry are trying to find a better way to deal with the growing amount of radioactive water at the plant. They're putting out a call at home and abroad for technology that could help. They decided on a plan on Friday during a meeting with scientists. They're seeking methods to build watertight storage tanks and quickly detect any leaks. They're also looking for ways to capture tritium. 
the new decontamination device that's expected to be built can't remove the radioactive element. Ministry officials say they plan to put an announcement on their website in November, giving more details on what they require. The scientists advising them estimate that if no measures are taken, the amount of contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi could increase more than five times to 1.7 million tons in eight years. Japan's industry minister says people should stop focusing on isolated problems at the plant and look at the overall picture. Toshimitsu Motegi says the leaks at Fukushima Daiichi do not pose a threat to the environment outside the compound. Motegi was responding to criticism of comments by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Abe assured members of the International Olympic Committee that the situation at Fukushima Daiichi is under control, but a TEPCO official contradicted that view. Motegi says the radioactive water is affecting only a limited area inside the plant's port. The government is taking the initiative in tackling the problem. It's pushing preventive and multi-layered measures to ensure the wider sea is not affected. Motegi also says offshore radioactivity levels are well within safety standards. More and more groundwater that flows into the plant's compound is becoming contaminated. And government officials have held a briefing for potential bidders on projects to deal with that massive buildup. Officials explained a plan to create a wall of frozen soil around the reactors to block groundwater from getting in or out. It will measure about 1.4 kilometers around and about 30 meters deep. The officials say the structure must withstand any rapid flow of groundwater and still be effective in places where there's plumbing. They also outlined a project to reduce radioactive substances in the tainted water. They told the firms that they need equipment that can treat 500 tons of water a day. It has to drastically cut levels of 62 types of radioactive materials in the water. It will also need to reduce the amount of radioactive waste to one-fifth compared to current amounts. The government is earmarking about $210 million in reserve funds from this year's budget to deal with the problem. The people overseeing Fukushima Daiichi are offering details on how they dealt with the problem caused by the storm. They say workers released about 1,100 tons of rainwater that had pooled at the facility. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company said rain accumulated inside barriers around storage tanks for radioactive wastewater. Workers released the water in seven locations on nearby soil. The workers didn't release the water directly into drainage ditches that lead to the sea. We've determined that it's rainwater and are dealing with it accordingly. TEPCO officials say the levels of radioactive substances in the water were below the government set limit of 30 becquerels. Company officials say they will look at ways to keep rainwater from accumulating during future storms. A member of the Japanese cabinet is trying to dispel concerns what's going on at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Science and Technology Policy Minister Ichita Yamamoto says government leaders will work on fixing leaks of radioactive water. Yamamoto spoke at the annual IAEA General Conference. The government of Japan has decided to assume a proactive role to achieve a fundamental settlement of this issue. Yamamoto said that the toxic water does not pose a threat to the ocean beyond the immediate area around the plant, and he said food and drinking water are safe. Japanese nuclear regulators and energy officials offered more details at, its, at an explanatory session. About 200 people attended. It was a good, uh, detailed meeting, but it did not uh, focus on the fundamental questions of uh, responsibilities and uh, the government role versus TEPCO's role. I think the government has realized that uh, they have not done a good job in exp expressing that, uh, and they need to do a lot better. Japanese leaders are hoping to dispel international concerns by being more open about the situation in Fukushima. A former Japanese government official says the company responsible for the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant failed to keep a promise to contain leaks of radioactive water. 
The Sumio Mabuchi is an executive member of Japan's Democratic Party, which governed the country until last December. He served as an advisor to former Prime Minister Naoto Kan in the aftermath of the March 2011 disaster. Mabuchi told a party meeting on Wednesday that Tokyo Electric Power Company officials had promised back in June of 2011 to build shields around reactor buildings at Fukushima Daiichi that would block radioactive water from getting out. Tokyo Electric asked the government not to announce the agreement, saying that the company was worried that the building cost of $1 billion would add to its debt and could lead to market confusion. Mabuchi says the Kang government agreed not to make the deal public, but TEPCO did not follow through. A TEPCO official who attended Wednesday's meeting says he cannot confirm what went on at that time. The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant say they're dismantling a tank that's caused them a number of problems. Last month, more than 300 tons of highly radioactive water leaked out. Some of it has flowed into the Pacific Ocean. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say they began taking apart the tank on Tuesday to find out what's wrong with it. They say they'll examine the tank to identify where the leak occurred. They say the work could take several days and about 350 similar tanks are installed on the grounds of the plant. The people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have yet another problem on their hands. They say they've found cracks in the brace supporting an exhaust pipe. Authorities are concerned the pipe could collapse in another earthquake. The 120 meter tall pipe stands between two reactor buildings. Workers used it to release radioactive vapors and prevent an explosion after the disaster at the plant. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say they spotted cracks in eight places on the steel brace that holds the pipe upright. They suspect the earthquake two years ago caused the problem. They say there's no evidence of any damage to the pipe itself. Overseers at the Nuclear Regulation Authority are demanding that company officials investigate immediately. They want to know whether the structure can withstand another earthquake. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has called on the company in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to scrap all reactors, including the two that were not severely damaged by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. There are six reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Four of them are already set to be dismantled. Local community leaders have been urging TEPCO to also scrap the other two. Prime Minister Abe inspected the plant on Thursday. He said he echoed the request in a meeting with TEPCO executives. I urged TEPCO executives to dismantle the number five and six reactors to concentrate their work on dealing with a series of problems, including leaking radioactive water. The typical officials told NHK the company is taking the Prime Minister's request seriously and will decide what to do by the end of the year. Abe instructed the company to set the deadline to decontaminate radioactive water that is being stored at the site. 400 tons of groundwater seeps into the damaged buildings on the Fukushima Daiichi compound and get contaminated every day. Abe said TEPCO's president Naomi Hirose told him the company plans to decontaminate the water by March 2015. In light of the events at Fukushima Daiichi, Japan's government established the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Thursday marks one year since the organization began operations. In that time, regulators have drawn up new safety standards and conducted surveys on active seismic faults at Other nuclear plants in the country. But as NHK World's Noriko Okada reports, some people say the NRA is not doing enough. Members of a diet panel surveying the Fukushima Daiichi accident denounced what was then the country's regulatory body, the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. They said officials were in the power of the companies they were meant to supervise. Government leaders launched a new regulatory body independent of the government and the power industry. They named it the Nuclear Regulation Authority. The authority's first major task was to evaluate the safety of the country's commercial nuclear plants. Experts have been conducting a survey on active seismic faults beneath the plant. They confirmed the existence of an active fault. 
under the number two reactor at the Tsuruga plant in Fukui Prefecture. The authority has reiterated that reactors cannot be allowed to restart unless their safety is confirmed. The NRA has also adopted new guidelines to be followed by operators of nuclear power plants. Under these new rules, the utilities are required to prepare for all kinds of serious accidents. We have come up with a rather thorough set of requirements that are tough even by international standards. But I believe the true worth of these safety requirements will hinge on the actual inspections. The authority is, however, under fire for its unclear response to recent contaminated water leaks from the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant. Professor Jota Kanda has been studying the issue. He says there is nothing to show that the authority is spearheading efforts to settle the problem of contaminated water leaks. Observing the way they're handling the issue of contaminated water, it looks like a dual administration by the NRA and the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, which oversees electric power plants. And the NRA itself does not appear to be assuming a leading role in the issue. Most NRA employees once worked for its predecessor, which was criticized for its lack of expertise in nuclear plant operation. Experts are calling on the authority to elevate its level of expertise. The safety of all nuclear facilities in Japan lies on the shoulders of these officials. Noriko Okada, NHK World. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announced last month that the government would take the lead in cleaning up the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The plant's operator has set a tentative deadline for the decontamination of radioactive water. But engineers at the troubled facility will face major hurdles trying to meet that goal. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata reports. Abe on Thursday paid his second visit to the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The visit was apparently in response to international concerns over whether the situation at the site is really under control. TEPCO's president said they'll complete the decontamination of radioactive water in fiscal 2014. TEPCO officials say some 440,000 tons of wastewater are present in building basements and storage tanks on the site. 15,000 tons or more has accumulated in underground tunnels. Workers store 400 more tons of radioactive water every day. The problem was caused by massive amounts of groundwater pouring into the damaged complex. Engineers had expected a water filtering facility called the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, would reduce the amount of radioactive water. The facility was designed to filter out most of the radioactive elements. Workers gave it a test run in March. Abe toured the building that houses the ALPS. Operators say they found holes in the machinery caused by corrosion. Abe says the government will build another water filtering facility. A TEPCO official says that will enable the utility to decontaminate 1,500 tons of radioactive water every day. Company officials must also find a way to remove radioactive tritium from the water. They admit the goal of completing the decontamination by March 2015 will be tough to meet. Tomoko Kamata, NHK World, Tokyo. Prime Minister Abe also asked TEPCO on Thursday to decommission the number five and six reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Japan's industry minister Toshimitsu Motegi supported the idea. Decommissioning number five and six reactors will create additional space. More tanks can be set up there to store contaminated wastewater. 
He also said during the decommissioning process, TEPCO could use the two facilities to train its engineers. Motegi said such training is impossible at the damaged number one to four reactors due to high levels of radiation. The number five and six reactors were not damaged by the 2011 quake and tsunami, unlike the plant's other four. But local municipalities have been demanding that TEPCO decommission them.